This morning we follow the order of service found on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. We may have the earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And forgive the iniquity of my sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor merciful sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with the goodness I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your promise of mercy, and for the sake of our holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce unto you the grace of God, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the responsive reading of the introit, which is printed in the back pages of the bulletin. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. And he will redeem Israel. From all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Mountains might quake at your presence. Again, during Advent, we omit the Gloria in Excelsis. We continue with the salutation and collect on page 189. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, stir up your power and come and help us by your might that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading for this morning comes from Isaiah in the seventh chapter. Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Then he said, Hear now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. 
Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that you dread will be forsaken by both her kings. The Lord will bring the king of Assyria upon you and your people and your father's house, days that have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading we find in Romans, the first chapter. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. and He called his name Jesus. This is the Gospel of our Lord. We confess our saving faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of His Father before all worlds, God of God, the light of light, very God of very God, the God of not made, the being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son. With the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
grace and peace be to you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our text this morning is from the epistle reading, Romans 1.1. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. Your friends in Christ, it is said that in the first century when St. Paul wrote this to the Romans, that about one-third of the total population of Rome were slaves. Slavery was an ancient institution, not just for the Romans, the Greeks before them had slaves, and the Jews, too, had slaves. When Paul preached Christ to the Romans, he described himself in terms that your average Roman would have been a little annoyed at. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, a slave of Jesus Christ. Our version this morning simply says servant, but the Greek word used there is the word for slave. So Paul introduces himself by saying, I'm a slave. And the Romans, they prided themselves in being slaves to no one. They were the masters in their eyes. They owned slaves. So for Paul to say that he as a leader of the Christians was really a slave of Jesus would have been offensive to the Romans. What Roman would have wanted to be part of a band of slaves? What Paul is doing here is purposely pushing their buttons to make them think. He wanted them to think about their relationship to Jesus, to their role in life. As children of Christ, new converts to the gospel, they were not free to live life on their own terms. They were answerable to one greater than themselves. And being answerable to God meant that their entire lives were really not their own. The freedom they thought they had as Romans was actually an illusion. In today's world, and for us in our American context, we pride ourselves in our freedom just as much as any Roman did. We live in a country where you can almost do anything you want, except maybe say something negative about homosexuality, which could get you fired. We're all free to be what we want, to believe what we want to believe. We're free, if we want, to reject Christ and go to hell. But this political freedom we enjoy is an illusion. In reality, when it comes to matters of faith and God, we are not free at all. No one is. Every human being obeys a master. And either that master is God or that master is the devil. Now just a few chapters after this one where Paul addresses the idea to the Romans of being a a slave, Paul says this, he says, "Do Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? We Americans certainly don't like to think we're slaves to anybody or anything. We talk an awful lot about free will in our American culture. We are the ones who decide what to do or not do. We are our own masters. And while life goes along easily and things go our way, it's kind of easy to believe that. Most days... We do seem to be in control of ourselves and masters of our own destiny. We might even take a little pride in the fact that our decisions are taking our life down a pretty good road. But life itself has a way of wrecking that illusion real fast. Things happen in our life that are totally out of our control. Decisions that we may have thought at the time were pretty good decisions wind up turning into disasters. And that control of ourselves that we think we have can suddenly be ripped away by that monster that lives inside of us that we try to keep chained up. We can do terrible things. We can say terrible things. We can have thoughts flood our mind 
that are anything but godly, hateful thoughts, murderous thoughts. We can go from being somebody who looks like they're in complete control to somebody who's completely lost control in a heartbeat. And maybe in public we put on a good face and we look pretty self-assured and confident, but in private, that's when we break down and let the doubt and the fear and the worry and the sorrow all take over. Nobody is free in their own souls. Not even St. Paul himself was free. Before Christ called him to be an apostle, Paul was a slave to that other master, the devil. We thought he was serving God because he did godly things and he looked pretty godly on the outside, but the master he was serving was Satan. And step by step, the devil was leading him down a road to his eternal ruin. That's the nature of all people from birth. We are born under slavery to sin. Fortunately for us, a Savior was born to break us out of that slavery to sin. During this Christmas season, we celebrate specifically the fact that Christ was born to lay down a purchase price in his own blood that could buy us away from this other master. He did. He lived and he died. He gave himself into a horrible death so that we could no longer be slaves to our own destruction. But he didn't just kind of set us free to go out there and do as we will. Instead, he made us his servants. But the new servitude we have to Christ, the servitude St. Paul presents to the Romans, does not at all feel like slavery. Being a slave to our God winds up actually being a liberating experience. As Paul describes himself again, he says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. Being a slave to the one true God meant being separated to the gospel. Separated from domination and control of sin and separated into God's forgiving love. That gospel that St. Paul presents to the Romans is the gift of God's forgiving, saving love. A gift even of sonship. So we are slaves in one sense, in as much as we now live under a master, but we also are given full rights as sons. So this is not a normal slavery. This is a very different kind of servitude. As a redeemed and forgiven people, washed clean by Christ, claimed by him and made his own, we do live under the will of another. But now our new master, our heavenly father, his will is first of all to serve us. He turns that whole slavery thing around. He serves us by giving us that which we would be lost to him if we didn't have. He gives us his forgiveness. He gives us his whole kingdom. He washes us clean of the filth of this world so we can stand before him, even as we do today, as a people without spot or blemish. Today you confessed your sins. Today God said to you, your sins are forgiven. And in a real sense, in his eyes, they're gone. You're a holy people. Forgiven, restored to God. That is something more than slavery. That is adoption. I think Paul uses the idea of slavery because he wants the Romans to understand the true involving nature of being a child of Christ. Romans, and I think many Americans like them, don't see God as the essence of our everyday existence. 
God tends more to be the place you go to feel better when you're down or find comfort when you're scared by, say, death or something. He's the one where we go to for help, not necessarily the very essence of every breath we breathe. Paul wants the Romans to understand that their new Christian faith has immersed them in the very heart of God every minute of every day, in everything they do, and in everywhere they go. They are bound to God, heart, mind, and soul, like a slave is bound to a master. And my friends, that is true for us. We live every moment of every day, everywhere we are in the house of our heavenly master. But our obedience to this master is not a burden as normal slavery would be. Jesus says, come unto me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We are liberated under this master. We are freed from our sin. Freed even from that part of ourselves that would self-destruct. We are given a better path in, in life to walk. A path that is not filled with regrets and shame. There's maybe no more better example for us of this kind of servitude than what we see in the gospel reading this morning. When the angel came to Joseph, Joseph is a marvelous example. Joseph's desire at first when he found out Mary was with child was to divorce her. Obviously, she had been with someone else while she was engaged to Joseph. God came to Joseph, however, and told him to deny his own will, to take Mary as his wife, because the child she was carrying was God's son. Now, for Joseph, obeying God carried certain consequences, because to everybody else, it was going to look like Joseph was the one that got Mary pregnant. Joseph was a godly man. He was chaste and honest. It would have been very painful for him to hear himself called a fornicator when he was a man who wouldn't do such a thing. Joseph, however, willingly endured the scorn of the world around him. He was actually being asked to believe in something that went completely against human reason but because he saw himself as one in the house of his master, he had trusted God. He believed God, even contrary to human reason. He was a slave to the will of God, and it cost him dearly. But it was a slavery that proved to be the greatest blessing in his life. Joseph was not only blessed to be able to know the Messiah, but actually to teach the Son of God, what it meant to be a human being and a man. It was an honor above all honors that Joseph was given. God's will that Joseph understood was to save Mary and Joseph from their sins, to save, in fact, the whole world. The will of God was eternal life. And Joseph's servitude joined him to that saving will of God. He was pleased to be able to bear this service because he knew what God was giving him. This is how we should approach life. We should claim his example as our own. Following God's will is never easy. It always puts us at odds with the world around us. And it might very well sometimes go against what seems most reasonable and logical in our human way of thinking. It's vital for us at moments like that that we remember we are under a master who knows what we don't know and whose will is for our eternal welfare. 
He sees the world around us. He sees our weaknesses. He loves us. He gives us His Son. He washes our sins. We live under this Master who never forces us to obey as a slave, but who treats us as sons and daughters purchased with the lifeblood of His own Son. So we approach life with a spirit of servitude. Not from compulsion, but from joy and thanksgiving for having been brought into such a house as this. Being claimed by such a master, being loved by such a father. With Paul, we are pleased to be able to see ourselves as servants to this master, called and separated to the gospel. Thanks be to Christ. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ, Word of God made flesh, we thank and praise you that through the Holy Spirit you have directed our hearts to bow before you in faith and service. You are indeed our God made flesh, our sin bearer, our substitute who has brought us into the household of God and made us children of the Father. O Savior of the world, we pray that you might send your Holy Spirit out throughout the world so that every sinner may hear of your work and find your forgiveness and rest from sin and hell. Fill us with your Holy Spirit 
granting us tongues willing to testify to others that they too have been ransomed by your blood. Lord God, we pray that you might increase the faith of all of us so that with your help we might be able to chase worries away and not give in to fear or doubt, but that our every sinful desire might be subdued by your grace and our spirits changed into spirits of joy and hope. Blessed Father, we pray that you might send your help and your blessing to Dana Peel as he faces treatment for cancer. Increase his faith and trust in you so that he might face this time of trial without fear. Grant him health, strength, and faith according to your good and gracious will. And finally, Lord God, we pray that you might bring all of us safely to yourself in heaven, where together with all your saints, we will gladly sing our praises to you throughout the endless ages. We ask all this, knowing that as our Lord and Savior, you do hear us. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Bless we the Lord. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.